All right. Uh, so for um, for recording purposes, I'll just say again that what we will need is a massage ball. Maybe a strap if you use a strap for various poses. There's nothing I'm going to guide you to use today. Your blocks, chair, if you would like to have a chair handy. I will be doing a couple of poses using the chair. So let's get settled. So finding a seat wherever feels most comfortable for you. Take a few cleansing breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. With every breath in, taking in this moment with every breath out, settling your body into the space that you have created for yourself. And bring a hand over the heart and a hand over the belly. And I invite you to breathe in the word Ahava for love. You might breathe in, imagine breathing in love and then exhaling the word. Ahava. Do that a few times. Breathing in Ahava, love. Breathing out, ahava. And feel the vibration in your body as you do this a few times. Breathing in love, ahava. Breathing out, sending love. You can keep your hands where they are or you can rest them on your lap, whatever feels natural for you. So in honor of our secular holiday of Valentine's Day yesterday, uh, just the theme of love, the theme of love is where we're going today. And I was thinking about um, the love sandwich that is often referred to uh, by our rabbis in our siddur. This love sandwich, which um, starts with ahavat olam, which is everlasting love, and then there's the shema in the middle. Like you can think of that as um, kind of the main ingredient, actually. And then the the other slice of bread, if you will, the ve'ahavta. So the Ahavat Olam is the unending love that God or Creator or whatever you want to call it has for us. Um, and the Ve'ahavta is our love for God and how we show our love for God or Creator. And in the middle, what's fascinating to me is the Shema because the Shema is to listen. And it's not just to listen. It's to, um, it's what we do, we acknowledge the oneness of God. We acknowledge the oneness of all of creation. We acknowledge the oneness in other, right? Other people, other creatures of the planet. We acknowledge oneness and we acknowledge the big oneness that holds us all. Um, but to be able to do that, we have to listen. We have to listen 
and we have to hear it and we have to understand it. All those three meanings of the Shema. We have to understand what we hear and what, and we have to listen for something. So this is all related to love, right? This is related to love because we have to listen and look for, I think of looking for and listening for love, evidence of love for us all around. And then we also take what we know of love and then we share it with others. And we're just part of this like love sandwich, right? That's just what I'm, it can be cut in the shape of a heart if you like. The bread is cut in the shape of a heart. So let's go with that um, exploration of love uh, coming to us and coming from us. So we'll start with um, opening up the chest with some active stretches as we breathe. You can do this in a chair if you need to move to a chair at any time. So we'll start with side bending, just opening up the rib cage. So right hand on your mat and left hand comes up. And then just a gentle lean to the side. Try not to collapse. We want to reach out up and diagonally pull the belly in and take a big breath in and just try to retain that breath for a second. Just stretching the rib cage and then exhale. We're going to do the same side three times. Inhale, reach up. Reach, side bend, hold the breath for a second and exhale. And again, last time, inhale, reach up. Notice if your shoulder is leaning forward. If it is, try to rotate the chest a little bit toward the sky and release. Good, do some shoulder circles. And we'll move to the other side. Inhale the right arm up and over. Retain the breath for a second. Exhale, release. Inhale up and over, belly is pulled in. Exhale, release. Inhale up and over. Rotate the chest a little more toward the sky. And exhale, release. Good. We're going to bring the hands to the knees and drop the shoulders away from the ears. So it's, it's kind of common for the shoulders to come up when we reach forward. So I want you to really focus on dropping the shoulders and then reaching your hands out like you're going to reach past your knees and feel a stretch in the upper back between those shoulder blades, kind of high in the upper back. And then you're going to round just the upper back. So you're not doing a cat cow seated. You're just rounding the upper back till you feel a stretch. Tuck your chin down and then take a deep breath in. And then exhale, release, draw the shoulders back and down. We're going to do that two more times, nice and slow. Dropping the shoulders, reaching past the knees, breathing in, tucking the chin. Exhale, back to upright. And one more. And back to upright. Go ahead and do some more shoulder circles, whatever direction feels good. Good, so now we're gonna open the chest and breathe into that area of the collarbone. So the hands can, um, actually what I would do, probably, if you're sitting on your block or on the floor, either way, or on a chair, you reach back for the back of the chair. You're gonna reach the arms back. Again, drop the shoulders down, press the chest open, and you can tuck your chin, and inhale, stretch the front of the chest and exhale, release. I like to leave my hands here, but you can bring them to the front if you want. Inhale, tuck the chin, open the chest, reach back with your fingertips, draw the tips of the shoulder blades together and release. One more, we're gonna inhale, receiving love, receiving love and exhale. Good. Go ahead and just move your shoulders any way that feels good. You're going to release your neck a little bit now. So just gentle movements of the neck, whatever feels good for you. If you notice anything is tight, pause there. Let your 
head gently rest as you breathe into the space of your neck that feels a little tight. Take your time. We're taking our time, we're showing self-love and patience with ourselves in our process. What do you notice in your neck? Come back to upright and pause where you are and just notice any shift in the upper body that we've been stretching, just notice anything there is to notice. And then we'll switch over to our knees, hands and knees, tabletop posture. And start to move the spine now. So your wrists are under your shoulders and your knees are under your hips and just letting the spine round as much as is comfortable or uh, allowable if you have a medical condition that you know you shouldn't be rounding the spine and just making the movement really small otherwise just exploring the full range of your spine this morning flexion and extension maybe some more side bending and tail wagging. Open your mouth, stretch your jaw really, really wide. Just like you're saying, wow. Like just say, wow. And take your mouth into this full range of motion, releasing your jaw. You can even, you can even whisper, wow, and you'll still get that movement. And then keep your knees where they are and your tush up and just start to walk your hands forward into puppy pose, just to stretch those muscles in the underarms and help create some space in the breathing, the muscles for breathing. If your head doesn't reach the mat, you can always put a block there if that feels better for you. And just focus on reaching those arms forward as much as you can, pulling your belly in, pressing down on the mat, and then imagine that you could bring your hips back toward your heels, but you don't go anywhere. So you just make it a little isometric stretch. Take a big breath. Feel the front of the rib cage and the diaphragm stretch and let it out. A couple more times here. And then let your hips drop toward your heels. You can open your knees if that feels better for you and rest in child's pose. In this position, this yoga pose of receptivity and surrender, Surrendering to love. I'm going to have you come back up now. If, you're not, if your uh, wrist gets sore, you can come onto your knuckles at any time or fists. We're going to come back to tabletop pose and lift the right knee off of the mat and just spring it out to the side and just start to do some circles, little fire hydrant circles. Keep your belly pulled in and make your circles as big as is comfortable for you, just opening up those hips and warming up the joint of the hip of the hip. Good, and then we'll change to the other side, lifting the left knee, making some big circles, really slow. 
I know it, it starts to burn pretty quickly, <laughs> at least it does for me. And reverse your circles, keep your belly pulled in. Good. Staying right in tabletop now, you can come to knuckles if you need to. Go ahead and reach your right leg out behind you, lift the right leg again. Pull the navel in. If you would like to work with balancing and firing up your core today, you can lift your, your left arm up. So left arm, right leg reaching in opposite directions, pulling the belly in, squaring the frontal hip bones to shine straight down at the floor. Good, and release. And other side. Take your time coming into this bird dog pose. Waking up those balancing muscles. And release, good. You can do a little rounding of the back, release your spine any way that feels good. And then we're gonna all meet standing um, with your massage ball handy and your two blocks. Or if forward folding um, exacerbates any lower back tenderness, you can always use the seat of a chair so that you don't come down as low, just to keep you from having to come up um, and straining your lower back. So we'll have our blocks nearby and our ball right nearby too. So feet are hip width apart standing in mountain pose shoulders back and down feel the connection of your feet on your mat rocking forward and back just think of um, tracing the outer edges of your feet so as you rock forward feel your inner arches kind of sink in for a second rock to the big toes rock around all of your toes rock to the outer feet as you lean back a little bit find your heels so you're just kind of saying hello to all the edges of your feet, right? And then you can reverse drawing like you're drawing a line with your own body weight around the edges of your feet. Good. And then find center. So find now where you're just standing in the middle of that print of your foot. And when you're doing your yoga poses today, remember this feeling of your whole, all of your feet being connected to your mat. We're gonna go through some half sun salutations, just breathing and reaching and forward folding. So inhale, reach up. And then exhale, dive forward with a flat back until you find the place where you're going to land with support. So you might come right to the floor, you might use one or two blocks or a chair. Release the weight of your head, let your spine get nice and long. Take a breath in. Your knees can be as bent as you want them to be. It matters how you feel. Make sure you're feeling a comfortable stretch here. Pull your belly in, start to look up, and then reach your hands up your shins, and then out to the sides, and up to the heavens, and then bring your hands to your heart. Breathe in, reach up. I receive love. Breathe out, hands to the heart. I listen for love. I listen. I listen for evidence of love all around me. Inhale, bring your arms out to the side. And then dive forward with a flat back. I surrender to love. I am rooted in love. Inhale, come up with a flat back. Reaching out, I receive love. Hands to your heart, I listen for love. Inhale here. Reach out, I give love. Dive forward. 
I am surrounded by love. Let's do one more. Inhale, reach up. I receive love. Exhale. I listen for love. I listen to understand love. Breathe in. Reach out. I give love. Dive forward. I surrender to love. I am rooted in love. Big breath in. Bring awareness to all the edges of your feet. Start to slide your hands up the front of your shins, flat back. Reach the arms out to the side, just receiving love. Receive the love from all your fellow practitioners right now. I'm sending you love. Bring your hands to your heart. Good. Let's do some um, thumping for our immune system. So we're gonna do our three thumps, tapping under the collarbones. Just that nice soft little spot under that collarbone area. Just tapping with your fingertips, taking some nice deep breaths. Good, and then the center of the chest, letting out a nice big ah. Good, we'll do two of those ahs. The next one you do a nice big smile. Ah, good, and then knock on your ribs. Tap and knock on the rib cage. Just waking up all those meridian points to support the immune system. Good, because we've got allergy season too, right, for some people. And then we want to just shake that out. And then get your massage ball. If you're new to class and you didn't have a massage ball, this is a pink ball that's like a, a soft sport ball. You can get it at a toy store or at a sports store. You can use a tennis ball as well. Um, if you're not using a ball today, you can feel free to have a seat on your chair and just give some love to your feet. So we'll start with the right foot and think of drawing that line around all the edges of your right foot. So you'll have to go kind of slow so the ball doesn't fly out from under you. Try to get the ball under your heel into the very outer edge of the heel. Connecting all parts of your feet. So we're gonna draw the line around the foot and then start to, almost like a, a spiral, we're gonna start to go around and around, making the circle smaller. And you find some sore spots along the way and if you do, pause and breathe into those spaces. Give love to your precious feet today. Good, let's switch sides. Just notice before you do though, just the difference between the foot you just massaged and the one that has yet to receive perhaps even more connected to your mat. And we'll start to draw around the edges of the left foot or working with your feet around the edges, or your hands around the edges of the foot. Keeping the abdomen pulled in too, because this really is a bit of a balanced pose just to work with trying not to lose that ball. Going both directions, drawing along the edges of the foot. Starting to make your circles smaller and smaller. Pausing anywhere that you need to. 
bringing breath to that area. Good. All right, we're going to place the ball off the mat. Just do some ankle rotations, just from one side to the other, keeping the toes on the ground. So feel that movement in the ankle, traveling into the knee, into the hip. Great, so we're gonna start with a couple of standing poses. So um, I have my chair here just so that you can see what, what it can be used for. Two blocks as well on either side of your mat, the front of your mat. So we're gonna take a, a warrior two pose. So the right, uh, the right foot is your front foot. And the heel lines up with the back arch. And bend that front knee as, as, com as much as you want. Um, press your, your knee toward the little toes so they're, you're ki keeping your knee safe. Open up those arms. In this active pose, this warrior pose, warrior for love. Drop your shoulders away from your ears. I give love. And then you'll straighten the front knee and come into a self hug. I receive love. And back into warrior two, I give love. Self hug, I receive love. Do this a few times on your own, take your time. As you come into your warrior two, giving love, you can pause there. We're gonna make a transition. So um, listen carefully. I'd like you to turn your shoulders toward the top of your mat. Your back foot is now gonna come up. So we're gonna come into a lunge. So you have your blocks here or the chair. You might need to move your back foot forward a bit walk your uh, front foot out to the side a little bit so that you're on imaginary railroad tracks and not a tight rope. And then when you're ready, you're gonna come up into a crescent lunge. So take your time so you keep your back happy and your uh, balance stable as possible. So we're coming into crescent lunge. Good, <laughs> yeah, there's a little wobbling. It's okay, I do it all the time. I'm always wobbling. So if you're wobbling a bit, just walk your feet out to the sides a little bit more. Whee, see, wobble, wobble. All right, we're gonna have the shoulders upright over the hips, reach the arms up, and just feel in the spine this column of light, this column of your own spiritual light connecting heaven and earth. Back knee can be bent a bit more to get a hip flexor stretch if you'd like. And then you can straighten both legs and come into cactus pose with your arms. It really helps to, to look at something that's not moving. And then bend the knees, come back into your column of light, giving love. And then open up the arms, receiving love. Go back and forth. And notice if it's a little bit of a struggle, the balance, and that's okay. Because Israel, Shema Israel, it means those who struggle with God, sometimes we struggle with love, loving our neighbor as ourselves. Good. Pause in your column of light. Good. Okay, so look for your seat of your chair or your blocks. We're going to hinge forward. Step your back foot forward quite a bit till your whole foot can be on the floor. And both your hips are facing the front. Pull your belly in. So for anyone who's having some tight hamstrings, just do this until you feel a stretch, not too much. 
Any lower back challenges, you want to stay a little higher in this so that we're avoiding rounding the back. And come down, hinge forward until you feel a stretch. Pull your right hip back just a bit. Feel all the edges of your feet connected to your mat, rooting down, root into support. There's a, a for some of you, I've, I've got an option here where I'm kind of in between. You can rest your head on the seat of the chair and then also use blocks. Anything is possible. Just listen to your body. We're going to bend the front knee a bit and then press into both feet. You can use your hands if you'd like to help press you back up to standing. Good. Go ahead and come to uh, the center of your mat. Just shake it out a little bit. If you need a forward fold or some hip circles, go for it. We'll take the same series of poses on the left side now. Warrior two to start, front heel to back arch. Breath is flowing. Feel the expanse across your chest. Imagine that this love in your heart that lives in your heart can just radiate out through your fingers, from your heart, through the top of your head, giving love, and then straighten the front knee, come into a self-hug, receiving love, giving love, and receiving love, not just love from God or, or other people, but from, from yourself. And do this a few times on your own. Let yourself settle in your warrior pose. We want to mindfully transition into our crescent pose. So you can start to tilt your, or your shoulders forward Carefully come onto your back foot. Use supports around you as needed to get you set up for crescent. Find as stable of a posture as you can. And then when you're ready, when you feel stable, creating that column of light from heaven to earth, you are the channel. You are always giving love, always receiving love. You are always listening, understanding, and giving love. Straighten the back leg, open up the heart. Bend the knee, reach up. Settling in the column of light. Then bring your hands to support in front of you. Step your back foot forward a bit. Square your hips. Pull the navel in. Feel your hips even. Maybe touch them. Make sure that one's not flaring open if possible. Squeeze the front thigh to keep your knee from hyperextending. Hinge forward to wherever you land. It's easy in a class setting to push ourselves, and I really encourage you to take ownership of your practice. If something doesn't feel right in your body, please modify. If you're not sure, it probably means that you need to back off or modify. Keep pulling the navel in, breathe, And then press into both feet. 
Use your hands to help support you up in that front knee. Come on up. Good. Shake anything out. Loosen things up. Release that pose. We'll take a balanced pose um, so you can have the chair nearby. I'm going to flip mine so that the back of the chair is near my body just in case I need to hold on to it. So we'll take stork pose. So uh, let's see, do the left leg as your standing leg. Connect, draw the line again around the edges of your feet and root down into that support. And then when you're ready, lift your right knee till the knee is lined up with the hip. And then if it feels safe and secure for your body, you can open up the arms and the palms face forward. Feel your strength. Welcome the wobble. If there's wobbling, it's all good. Reach your arms back behind you now. So really reach for the floor behind you. So opening your chest the way we did in our warm up, our breathing warm up. Your legs probably getting warm by now. Keep breathing. And exhale, release. Shake out that standing leg. And then you can either turn around so that, and you won't be facing the screen, but you could turn around and do the second side or move your chair if you're using a chair. Or just use the other hand to support yourself. Anything works. So standing toes, the right toes are facing forward. So look down, make sure they're not uh, like duck footed or pigeon toed, right? Pull the belly in. Reach your arms out. Open heart. Listening for evidence of love all around you, looking and listening for evidence of love. Reach the arms back behind you, open up the heart even more. And release, release everything. Shake out your standing leg. I'm gonna bring my chair to the foot of my mat. We're going to open up our um, our hips. Actually, I'll face here because I want to show you something. So we're going to sit on our chair for a figure four stretch. If you prefer to lay on your back for this or do pigeon pose, um, now's the time for you to do that. For those of us who have a little tighter hips, I want to show you a couple of options. So um, the first option I'll show is the right ankle over the left knee, if that's available. You can always use a strap to kind of help pull your, keep your leg in place. If that is feeling really tight or uncomfortable, you can bring one block to the outer edge of your left foot, kind of out in front. And you'll have to kind of play with this, but you can cr start to cross your right foot over as if you're going to lift it up onto your knee. Instead of lifting it onto your knee, you just place your, the side of your foot onto the block. And then you can hinge forward. In fact, maybe even two blocks might be nice because you have more place for the foot to land. Could work. So finding your outer hip stretch, what works for you today. Stretch your jaw, open up into your wow. 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 Good. Just open up that jaw. Release any tension in the throat and the neck. Okay, so from where you are, we're going to, if you're in a chair, you're going to bring your foot down and take a, a seated twist, looking over your right shoulder. So you'll use the chair for support. If you're on the floor, you also will come into a twist. Your knees will go to the left and you'll look over your right shoulder. So pick what works for you. Feel your spine grow, growing taller, lengthening with your inhale. Be 
think of your breath as like a cleanser. So it cleanses the channel of your being to give and receive love freely. With no muck, no muck in the way. Good, come back to center if, uh, from your twist and we'll open the hip on the other side. So whatever you did on the first side, try to do the same thing on the other side unless you're working with an injury or limitation. Listen to your body. Listen in order to hear what it's telling you. Take that and put, turn it into understanding that you can act upon. And act from a place of self-love. From your hip opener, go ahead and transition to a twist uh, from the chair over to the left side. From the floor, knees will go to the right, gaze over your left arm. To center. If you're on your back, go ahead and stay there. If you're on a chair, I invite you to come to your back and you can keep your chair handy if you want to put your lower legs over it for Shavasana. Um, we'll do a little bit of a, an inversion if you wish, if you like. So you can come to your back and bring your feet close to your bottom and then lift your hips for a bridge pose and place a block under those hips in a way that feels comfortable. And just pause in supported bridge here. Open the palms to the, to the sky so that it really helps the chest to open up. You can stay like this or you can lift one leg at a time upward just to bring some of that blood supply back toward the heart and the lungs. And feel yourself being held in this position. You're being held by gravity. Luckily, gravity is not going anywhere as far as I know. We can think of love as, as like gravity, that it's always around, it's always there. It's always our anchor. You can stay here a little longer if you'd like, or you can start to bend your knees towards your chest and release one leg at a time to the floor if you're ready. And then sliding the block out from under your hips whenever you're ready and just notice what else you might need. Any other movements or stretches before you create a, a welcoming 
space for Shavasana. So that might mean blankets or a pillow or legs on the chair, whatever works for you. listening to your body to understand what it needs. In the beginning of class, there was some reports of different um, aches and pains and tenderness. So before you go into Shavasana, unless that's what would serve you best right now, just listen to anything that you might need to give your body. And that might be stillness. So just checking in. I'm going to read to you the creative interpretation of the Veya Hafta from R. C. Dur. Love God with all the power of your heart, with its yearnings, its passions, with all you hold dear in life, and with the fullness of what the world gives you. Wrap these words around your deeds as a holy garment and let them shape your home into a dwelling place of peace. Wherever you go, scatter the words like seeds. Let them be drops of water on the thirsty earth. Seal these words upon your heart that their sacredness may permeate your being, coursing through your veins, melting body into soul. So let your body melt into your soul. Let your soul melt into your body, this holy vessel, this column of light that you are. Feel yourself wrapped in love. Loving kindness and 
Become aware of the weight of your physical body being held by gravity. Begin to notice the air on your skin, the temperature of the air as you breathe in through your nose. Let the light permeate your eyelids, start to seep in to your sight. And as your senses awaken, let your body move in whatever way feels good to help you re-emerge into this new moment. Take your time. Finding your way onto your side, perhaps, and then upright with your hands at your heart or on your heart. Notice how your body feels, how your heart feels. I invite you to join me in our universal closing blessing. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free. May all beings be loved. May all beings have peace. May it be so. Ken Yehi Ratsong. Shalom.